I studied art for many, many years, and I was really wanting to, to learn printmaking. And I went to open studio, and I succumbed to the fumes. And just as I was dying, they suggested that you might try watercolor printmaking on very heavy plastic plates, which you kind of sawed and you filed, and, and then you put gum arabic on, which helped the watercolor bond. So that was the beginning. And then my son, who's a professor at the art college, suggested I use calendar vinyl, which meant we could cut shapes, and it totally opened up the idea of watercolor printmaking. So we started, and we have continued to invent and discover more and more. And it's an amazing medium because you can become an instant artist. We have developed many different ways of working, and we've produced many, many beautiful paintings and very happy people. And this is totally invented here. You, you prepare your plate, it's called gum plate, and you can mess around with brush painting on it or you can have puddles and you can tip and tilt and blow with straws and then you can reinforce with aquarelles which are water-based paint. And when you've got that drying, you go and play with your paper. And so the paper, you can use barbecue sticks and ink, and you can do gesture drawings. So you can really play and not feel too inhibited because you don't really know what you're doing anyway. So eventually, you blot the paper, and you have a dry plate, and you print it on wet paper. It's just the right wetness. If it's too wet, it's terrible. And if it's not wet enough, it doesn't quite print but you get very good at that, so you put it through the press. But before you put it through the press, you can sprinkle salt on it, or twigs, or eggshells, and you can play with it, and they will become white spots. So you put it through the press, and out comes, it's a birth, and out comes your, your masterpiece. And if you're not too happy with it, you will take it to the fix-it garage, and we have several recipes for fix-its. And even then, if the fix-it garage is not too successful, you do desperate measures. And desperate measures are when you tear it up, burn the edges, and use it as collage. And you print it, and then the moment of when you pull the paper off, it's the most wonderful moment of birth. It's a very exciting one. And then you have to think, what am I going to do with it? I think it's, it's the most magical medium ever ever invented, basically, because I spent years and years learning all the rules, learning all the techniques, trying all the different, you know, I did pastel, I did oil painting, I did sketching. But what you can do with a rigid surface and floating colors on, you can put it away for years and bring it out again and it's waiting for you. You can make books with it, you can make posters with it, you can make clothing with it. It's a, an amazing technique, and we have developed it here, and it's very unique, and we share it with a lot of people. What delights me is the people who turn up at the studio. Some of them come every week, other ones come occasionally when they feel like it. Sometimes we have very, very talented artists who are delighted to have a new medium, and other times we have children who just do fantastic things. We have challenged people. Actually, they're the best artists of all, but they also do fantastic work, and they get so enthusiastic. If they're not finished, they go home and they spend many happy hours working on it in their other life. But they always leave enriched and, and comforted. It depends what situation they're in in their life. But that is what the whole purpose of Joshua Creek is. It's to bring sanctuary, it's to bring happiness, it's to bring new experiences and ways of maybe meeting people and sharing your own experiences with other people.